go with PDS, AutoCAD PDS, or AutoCAD. Oh, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Civil Textures. My name is Ferdy, and in this video, we're gonna show you how you can create your proposed ground model using the PDS tools surface design, insert gradient point, or draw by string, or add points. Now, if you already have your proposed model and your workflow is to design your proposed model in 3D polylines and points in AutoCAD, then what you have to do is just follow the same steps that we did in the previous video, part one, uh, how to create your existing ground model, and just skip to the part three video of assigning the zones. However, if you want to understand more about PDS and some of its features like surface design, then stick around. Let's begin. We open a new drawing and we make sure it's clear from any title blocks or layers as we don't want to import them with us in PDS so we can work layering system. So let's remove these extra as well. So PDS won't bring them in as well. PDS picks them. So let's attach our side plan. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a list of layers based on the external surfaces or uh, different construction depth that we're going to use. For example, the building will have a different construction depth than the service yard. Therefore, they're going to be on a different layer. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create our layers. I will name them CAD building with the prefix to know that these are my polylines that I imported from CAD. Now we're going to assign them some colors so we can be able to distinguish them in PDS. Just a tip here, never give the color green to any of your layers. The reason being is PDS always highlights in the yellow green when you select an object. So basically you want to distinguish between your selected object and the other rest of the lines. So I would keep it uh, any other color except green. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is create the perimeters for our surfaces. So let's go to cap build and what we're going to do is create a polyline. For our building. And I'll tell you why we're doing that later on in this video. So we're going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the areas for the building, car park, service yard, roads, and any landscapes within the site plan. So now that we've created our perimeter, what we're going to do is we're going to offset the zone perimeters by 0 0.1. So basically, the reason we're doing this is because what we want to do achieve is separation between the zones we don't want the lines to be overlapping one on top of the other that way our triangles will be nice and clean plus any difference in level won't clash for example if you have a curb line and a road the curb obviously will be higher than the road so you don't want them they cannot be on the same line that's like it's flawed regarding design because the software cannot be like create a ground model where exactly on, Z, uh, on, on the same line, there is a higher point and a lower point. They need to have even a 0 0.000001 difference in spot so they can create that ground model. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is offset everything by 0 0.01. Now, if somebody asks why 0 0.1, it's because it's visible to the eye without extensive zoom so if you have offset all your lines you should end up with something like this so let's unload our site plan and you should end up with a drawing that basically you have defined each area separately so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is save it as in our imports folder as cad propose zones and then save it as again as CAD proposed model. So what we will do now is go ahead and open our CAD proposed zones. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the 
layer name and from CAD to zones. So basically, this will come in play on the next video where what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign these perimeters to assign the triangles to these perimeters so the triangles that belong to the building we're gonna select the building perimeter and say to pds look these triangles belong to the building now if you go ahead and save your drawing and close zones and what we're gonna do is reload our extra f we're gonna open our proposed levels drawing And what we're going to do is we're going to select our levels. And we're going to bring them to our proposed model. Now, the reason we did that is because we want to import those text and points into PDS with us in case you want to use the command text to point. Now, what in addition, this will help us with adding any vertices that we missed what do i mean by that so let's take this service here for example we have a level of 7.15 here and 7 so we know if we and a 6.5 but if we click on a polyline we only have two vertex if you were gonna create a 3d polyline you know that you would have snapped a vertex there at the 6.5 and 7 but at the moment we have only 7.15 and at 7 so what we have to do is we have to add vertices to all the places that we need those vertex for example something like that so now we when we import this polyline into pds this vertex will be picked up and we don't have to do it in pds now you could do it in pds which is no problem pds allows you to add new vertices but since we went through the effort of creating our polylines in autocad and save it in our imports folder then just go the extra step and make sure that you added any vertices that you need there for example 7.15 7.6 and 7.6 there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new vertex there so we just make sure that we adding it in the right place and we're just gonna select add vertex and add it and we're gonna do this for the rest of the drawing so now that we've added all our vertices we added all the necessary vertices that we need what we're gonna do is save it and your imports folder should look something like that you should have your cat topographical survey from the previous video and we have the proposed zones basically simplified polylines of the perimeter of the layers and then our proposed model with our level zone what we're gonna do now is go ahead and open pds and we're gonna set up a new drawing. Make sure you latest PDS. And we're gonna go to our project file in PDS, and then we're gonna create a new PDS file and name it post. Hit OK. Then what we're gonna do is set up our project. And we're gonna name it DBU proposed. let's go ahead and import our dwg of the proposed site plan so to import model hit okay now these points are from the xrefs that i've mentioned we should have detached actually if you just go ahead and delete those points hit zoom yeah. if you have imported your 3d polylines and points from AutoCAD, then you would you can see them in 3D if you all control and left click. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is to digitize our polyline. So basically transform them from the AutoCAD polyline into the PDS poly. So what we suggest to do is to do it layer by layer. Let's freeze all there is, keep the CAD building, and just go modify, generate string we're going to select our building and we're gonna select our building polylines and we're going to repeat the process for everything else a few moments later so now we have generated our strings the reason we did that is when we import from autocad a complicated shape 
of polyline pds doesn't recognize even if it's closed pds would not recognize it as a full closed polyline and it might break it for you that is why we converted them into strings so when we go ahead and work with our surface design tool we can pick the whole string and work with it so if we want to start assigning levels what we're gonna do is there is many ways to do it in pds that's not a lie like there's so many ways you can do it you can create points you can create the strings we're gonna go briefly over the most used ones and then you can decide which one you like and in the future videos, we're going to talk more in detail where, how to use those tools more efficiently. So the first one is draw a point. So basically, you add a point. So we go draw point. We want to display it on a layer, let's say, 308. And prompt user for a level. So basically, if we want to add a point here, 7, let's snap on it and then will ask us here at the bottom enter the z level and let's name it seven and if we use the 3d tool you can see created the point the other way to do it is to create a string and prompt user for a level or you can add an explicit one and what you can do is snap vert from vertex vertex and assign your points 7.5 for example snap 7.5 let's do that good path so if we go and rotate you see created a 3d line these tools are good when you haven't done this process of creating your perimeters. So if you went down the route to create perimeter polyline and convert it into string, I would recommend strongly to use PGM, Surface Design, Design Perimeter. We're going to modify the levels of an existing string, hit digitize, and we're going to select our service yard. Now, if you can see here, it selected our string and it displayed the levels on each vertice. Remember when I told you to add the vertices? That is why we added them so we can define that point there. For purpose I didn't add a vertice here. So you can see that now we cannot specify a level here, but we need to add a vertice in PDS to specify that level. So it's self explanatory. What the surface design tools options are you can explicitly uh, add the explicit tell pds what level you want so let's go ahead and use that one we're going to use the 7.5 apply and all you have to do is levels apply the 7.5 make sure you uh, click as close as possible to the vertex that you want to assign you have 7.5 there and there now we can hit enter and then change it, hit enter again and add them. This is way easier than creating a 3D polyline in AutoCAD because a 3D polyline in AutoCAD, you have to click the arrow, then click on the next button, then type the value that you want. Where in PDS, you can hit enter seven and then you can click on how many vertices that you want to add the value seven without having to type. So it fast up process. Now, the next option that we have in the surface design is the interpret levels between two vertices. So basically it PDS calculates the level between the two vertices. So if you click the first one and last point, then you click the interpolate, it PDS will calculate or so you don't have to pull your calculator. Although you should double check. Make sure that that's the level that you want. And it works with your design, obviously. And then we have raise or lower the level of vertex. That's if you, let's say, offset that string and you want to lift it up for the curb line, for example. Or you can apply a long gradient, which is what I wanted to show you guys. So let's say we decided that this won't be one in 
40 and we want to make a sleeper one in 30 for example all you have to do is select the first point then select the point you want to apply the gradient to and it will apply it to you my preference of choice is to digitize uh, generate my strings and then imp uh, use the surface design tool to work out all my levels now if it's a quick and dirty cut and fill what you can do is since you imported your text you can just go to the construct text to point command go to proposed levels and what you can do is digitize location of point each text entity so you can make sure it snaps correctly so if we click ok and let's say we select the 7.5 and we hit enter it will ask us where we want to snap it so hit vertex and we snap it there that will be our 7.5 you can see here added a point 7.5 now you can select multiple points and then pds will go over all of them for you so if we go construct text to point hit ok then select all these points for example and then we pds will highlight them for you so it tells you level 0.7 where do you want it up vertex there then hit enter and goes for the next one and let's say i want it there go for the next one 7.5 i want it there 7 i want it there and then the 7.5 i want it there and then the other five say i don't want to specify it because i didn't add a vertice there 7.5 there is 7.5 there so there is no need for that the 7.5 for this one i can specify it there and there and the next one will be the other 7.5 specify it there and that's it and then the 7 i want to specify it there there so now if we rotate you can see pds added our points so there is more than one way to create your surface design so go ahead and try to create your surface design so what we're gonna do now is the same steps as we did with the existing we're gonna go ahead and create our uh, ground model so we go pgm build model build pgm now we have points lines strings we have basically mainly strings but you can leave point and lines if you did the points and lines or blocks if you use any blocks now the boundary i'm gonna specify it manually because we imported the side boundary so that's why we specified it so we're gonna hit ok and it will ask us to digitize the perimeter now we can select our boundary hit right click tells us the minimum and maximum level we're gonna hit ok and we're gonna create a new file and save it in the models folder so let's save it gm now just give it a few seconds to complete it now we're going to view the triangulation and you can see that there is more triangles now if you use points don't be surprised if you see less triangles because when using a string the triangles that will be created would usually be more because a string can have more detail so basically if we had like four points there we would have probably two triangles but since we have like very strings, you will have different more triangles. So basically, strings gives more details to your ground model. So just go ahead and hit OK, and you will see that your in your uh, ground model folder it created your GM proposed. Now, if you want to view it as a, a contour file, so you can make sure that all the levels work out great, you can go to PGM contouring contour and you can select you will select your gm proposed and what we're gonna do is select pds should automatically have a layering system for the contours we just need to find it a few moments later memory five secondary we're gonna put a 0 0.1 0 0.5 and let's hit okay and as you can see, we can see the contours here. So basically, we're, f we're falling towards the middle here. That's why you can see this bend there. 
the car park might need require more tweaking regarding the levels but overall it's looking good we have a low spot here so we did some purpose so on the future videos regarding the flood compensation we will show that one why we left it as a low spot and if we look at 3d you can see it now in the next video we're going to be looking at how to create zones and assign build up thicknesses to it so we can create our formations and then uh, execute our earthworks volumetric exercise i hope you liked this video and hit the like button if you liked it hit the sub button if you loved it and you can be updated with future content apologies if the video was tiny bit long but we had to cover a few basic things before we continue to the next video i would like to thank causeway and ben and Mikol for allowing us to use their license so we can bring this video to you and hope to see you next time Stay safe.